Hello and welcome back, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me, we're playing some Granadan Grandeur. I've decided against not attacking. We're going to attack fearlessly, let's go, we're gonna- we're gonna charge forth. And uh, we're gonna put down the Castilian army, it's just- it's just gotta happen. So yeah, we're gonna arrive on the 27th, let's do this. I was looking around at peace deals and stuff, I can get a deal now, but if I go for the deal right now, then I can't get war reps, and w war reps would just be kind of nice. Even though he's bankrupt, he won't be bankrupt for long, and I would just like to have those full benefits, I think. This guy was apparently born to the saddle. Don't we have a... Did we pick up a trait? We did. We are a glory seeker. Prestige from land battles, plus 50%. So he's, uh, he's bankrupt. Happy merchants just expired. Nice nine there, Malik, in the shock. Fireface, fireface, it's okay, I guess. Uh, we only have the two cav that are currently deployed. Two and a half morale versus 1.3. We've got less discipline. Uh, 0.57 tactics versus 0.55. That seems all fine and dandy. It's good and stuff. We rolled better than they did. Um, and of course, they, they have like nowhere to retreat to. First shock phase is a four versus a four. Okay, that's fine. We have cav and they don't, so that should be fine. That's a bad roll. That's also not a great roll. It's also not a particularly good roll. Hey, thanks game. Thank, thank, yeah, okay. So it's just gonna be, just overall bad rolls. Okay, cool, it's fine, it's good, it's fine. Morale boost just expired right on time. 3.55 war score, and their army is dead. So I was thinking to take this province, but unfortunately it is uh, not takeable because I, I don't control a fort in the area or whatever. If I wanted to get there, I have to go all the way around. So, I think we're just going to take this region instead. Let's see if he's willing to agree to that yet. He is willing to give me... War reps now. The fact that he has no army at all means that he is, he's done. So, I want to just peace out now, because... Trust is going to be upset, Steel is going to be upset. That's about the highest that we can actually go. We also have some, you know, disasters building up. we got Peasants' War, potential for Civil War. There's, there's some issues that we're working out. It's fine, it's going to be fine, don't worry about it. Uh, we can take a little bit of direct cash. I'm not sure that that's actually worthwhile, though. A little bit of inflation. Yeah, sure, why not? The coring cost is insanely small for this. 14.3 war score, uh, prestige. I think our mission... Is our mission not to, uh... Damn, it's not to improve prestige. That would be a good mission for right about now. Whatever, this is the piece deal that we're gonna take. So we're gonna gain uh, 57 AE, we're gonna get 18% overextension, 14.3 prestige. Uh, let's do it, let's take it, we're done. There's the war. The spoils of war! What do we do with the spoils? Step on, yeah, pause the game there. So it's a Granadan Reconquest of Cadiz. Overall, Granadan casualties were 9,155 brave Granadan soldiers at the expense of uh, only 4,200 Castilians, apparently. Let's see, I thought we killed more than that, didn't we? We stack wiped more than that at the end, I thought. Anyway, we ended up losing far more to attrition than anything else. Those, uh, those super fast sieges were painful. Castile tells us about the event, the end of the Castilian Civil War, where among possible options, they went with this will bring us closer to Aragon as their choice of action. So, apparently the death of Pedro I has happened. Uh, and... Trastamara just inherited Castile. Fancy. Okay, so some really weird stuff has been going on. Apparently, uh, now Castile is gone? They were gone? Huh. I have a church with Genoa until September of 65. Really? September? That's like a year and a half away! We just did like a 90% peace sale and that's how, how long the truce is? That's insane! I find that to be a bit ridiculous, actually. Uh, anyway, they seed a bunch of land to us, and now we have to decide. Do we want to only take a tenth to the treasury in favor of getting a ton of stability points? A fifth to the treasury, take more cash, and Granada gets denied soldiers' war spoils until 79, so for quite a while. Morale of armies goes down, 40% chance we lose some stab. We also would gain some unrest in all cores for 16 years, or we could take even more money, 271 ducats plus an extra 90 in the tooltip there. 80% chance of losing stab. I think, I think, in this case, we've got to play it safe, right? That was a, that was a gift. A gift just happened. We're gonna get a free stab out of this either way. Let's just take a tenth. That stability of Granada. The stability. I'm making fun of it slightly because it used to say that stability. Anyway, this is welcome news. We now have positive one stability, which as, uh, as per normal gives us negative unrest. 
apparently now also gives negative monthly war exhaustion, so that's awesome. Bonus yearly legitimacy and monthly autonomy change reduction. Now, unlike in uh, vanilla, where you just like, core, just immediately core, you cannot core a province while it has unrest or the martial law modifier. Cores represent civil administration, cores will be removed. We'll remove the OE penalty and the autonomy, yet transitioning to civil control can make suppressing unrest more difficult. Notice how we actually have no unrest in this land. It's when I core it that the penalties will go up. So for now, it's just land that has very, very high autonomy and will basically just sort of sit there for a while. Cadiz, on the other hand, is uh, is already ours. We already have a core on it. The unrest is at negative 19. Uh, communication efficiency pending. So that's what the martial law is. CE stands for communication efficiency. Basically, they need to calculate how far is this province from my capital, which will determine this this type thing here. Is it excellent excellent communication? Is it bad communication? Like, you know, what is it, basically? Anyway, we're going to repair loans. We are presently losing money due to rooting out corruption, amongst other things. We're going to go ahead and just stop rooting out corruption. We're going to lower maintenance down to nothing. We're going to mothball one of our forts. Two of our forts. One of our forts. Just one of our forts. Now, we'll keep the one in our capital on, but we're going to turn that one off. No, never mind. The capital already has some fort level. Let's turn that other one on. We have 2.3 War Exhaustion. I think War Exhaustion, if I remember correctly, is significantly more penalizing than it is in vanilla. Uh, diplomatic annexation integration gets reduced. National unrest goes up, as expected. Um, Actually, maybe it's not. It's, it doesn't look like it really affects income too much, if at all. Uh, war Exhaustion is having no effect whatsoever on that. Interesting. Does it have an effect on autonomy? Uh, let's see, legitimacy is having an effect. But no. Okay. National decisions are available. We can wear principal crown. We are powerful enough to proclaim our country a principality. I prestige of at least five, own at least ten cities. Currently we own eleven. Oh, one of the following must be true. Ruler has a diplomatic skill of three, ruler has a military skill of four, or we have a statesman and we need to be at peace. If we do so, we become newly promoted. For eight years, getting stability increase interval reduction, a little bit of bonus prestige, title rank duchy will be removed, and we get the title rank principality. So we are currently a... Uh, duchy is what it says, but apparently that's what... I don't see the word duchy anywhere in here, I don't know. Clearly, we're elevating our government rank if we take that decision. I don't see how this is a bad thing. So, yeah, let's wear principal crown. Yay for third diplomat. Cool. We can now also persecute the other religions. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Let's not do that. We could switch back to a despotic monarchy. That sounds dumb. Um, if anything, I would want to pursue religious tolerance now. We would lose some admin, lose piety. Stability increase interval goes down, and we become more tolerant of the new lands, while at the same time becoming less tolerant of the true faith, which we're still quite tolerant of. So, yeah. Maybe we give it a month or two just to stabilize, see how things are looking. Let's grab our ships and back to here. Now, it said that we had, like, what, 600 ducats in the, in the loot pool, but we only took, like, a tenth. The rest of it, 90% of it, didn't just disappear, it ended up in all of the provinces in our country. So it ended up in these local wealth pools, which affects um, provincial income, which affects the income of the estates, affects whether or not they're going to build buildings. Like if we were to go and look at the assess state power, these guys have 90 ducats on hand, The these guys have 32, lesser nobles have only 24. Okay, so this is the direct estate income values. I think most of the local wealth ends up getting tied up in this this big old pile of ducats. 380 ducats, for example, in Garnata. And if we inspect the country, the province, we can see examine province detail, economic data, urban wealth, 487.483 ducats. So, yeah. The money's in there, basically. Um, we still got a claim on this guy. I, I am surprised. I was really hoping maybe we could just, like, turn around and attack Trostamara now. Granted, that would have been kind of crazy. Wait, what? 
Because Steel has a truce with me until 65. Apparently, I don't have a truce with him. Probably because they ceased to exist, became part of Trastamara, and then became a new country altogether. So we could attack Castile. Is he still bankrupt? There's no way he's still bankrupt as well, right? He's got 18.58 war exhaustion. No allies. I mean, it would be insane, right? To, to attack him ag again? Are you serious? Aragon would actually accept an alliance with me right now. Uh, yep. <laughs> Let's take the alliance. All right, sweet. That's spectacular. Thank you for the alliance, Aragon. Let's stay friendly, buddy. Uh, his opinion of me is not so good. A little bit of loot scare, even though I kept my uh, my looting down to a very small number. We've lost the effects of minimal loot burden. That's good to see. All right, so currently, we currently only have an alliance with Aragon, nothing else. We are not rivaled to Castile. Aragon has rivaled England. England is not a valid rival for me. Let's just check real quick. Is there anyone else that might want to accept an alliance? Fez would, of course. Ottomans are at negative 85. I don't really think I want to be friends with, uh, with Fez. They've got a core that, that I want back. Declaring war on a Sunni is a sin, but a common one. <laughs> so it's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. He's on tech 5. I'm on tech 6. Soon to be tech 7-ish. I think for now we uh, we continue doing what we had done before. Let's just uh, play the field a bit. We'll improve relations with our neighbors. Let's also check out aggressive expansion because I did do quite a bit of that. That's amazing that I, uh, I don't have a truce with him. It's a shame that he didn't inherit the uh, the bankruptcy. Estate soldiers return. Now that the war has ceased, the soldiers of your estates have returned to their homes and all estate contributions have ended. If you have less than 75% of the regiments raised, your estates will be displeased. We have treated the soldiers well. Well, I didn't hire any of those guys, so Castile has announced a rival in Fez. Increase our piety by 10% for as long as we remain at war. Following peace options are disabled. Now, there's no way that I could I could imagine going to war with this guy right now. So I'm trying to make Aragon like me. Even though we're currently allies, he's still not particularly keen on being happy with me right now. We're going to offer him some military access and stuff. See if we can bump that relationship up a little bit. Make sure that he doesn't somehow decide to not be, not be friendly with me. Any way that I can rival his enemies? Sadly, no. But I am going to rival Castile, because I don't see any way around that. Aragon doesn't currently have a relationship with him either way, so hopefully that will just keep him from becoming friendly with that guy. Sicilian Pretenders have currently risen up. Nice. We've gained the Humiliate Rival CB against Castile. Zero percent aggressive expansion, no prestige, zero percent cost for monetary rep, war reps. That's it? Following peace options are disabled. So can you still do a humiliate then, I assume? Hmm. Very strange start to this campaign. So now that we are at peace, we are having some issues here. We've got, got a few concerns to, to square away, it looks like. So we've got the Peasants' War, because we have less legitimacy than 50. Alright, there is a decision I could take to raise legitimacy. And Civil War is due to having overextension of at least 10%. Now, I did not consider, probably should have considered, is there a subject we could release? And there is not. And, uh... Looks like if I had just gone one province deeper, we could have released Leon as a subject. And gotten below 10%. Maybe we will go to war again. I don't know now. He's got claims on this land, but he has no interest in it. That's strange. Alright, so let's see if there's a decision we can take to raise legitimacy. Or perhaps what we do instead is let's just go bug the lesser nobles. I think they have a, uh, a bit of support. 
We can request political support from them. Should take our legitimacy up a little bit. Or, that decision was what? A generous donation gets a six legitimacy. Let's just do that. We'll spend a little bit of cash instead of wasting the the favors or the, uh, the support of the nobles. Fez wants to be buddies. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, that's going to be a no. Sorry, buddy. Go ahead and reduce our inflation by a little bit. we got to let that war exhaustion come down. Apparently we have a diplomatic insult against Stettin. So Civil War, we got about 100 months for him. And the overextension, I don't see... Whoa! The effects of current overextension. Negative 14.4 tax income. And negative 9,000. Holy crap! My maximum manpower is only 327 point... 3,272. 3, That's pretty bad. Yeah, that, that's really bad. So apparently a lot of overextension. Did I take too much land? I wonder. If this guy's weak enough now that he would accept a threatened war for that core back. So we have like 53 uh, population. Now we have 111. I was able to keep the uh, the good peoples of Cadiz safe. There's still 140,000 beautiful workers here, living here, making me absolutely no money at all. Now you see here it says no estate. Don't believe that. The burghers control this province. So even if it's not stated as a uh, like an actual state, every single province will always be controlled by an estate in MNT 2.0, so uh, these guys basically, uh, if you look at the map mode, I believe it'll still work on the map mode as well no it doesn't, that's kind of frustrating I can see, I guess, why, but um, so the burghers control this, and this and the lesser nobles are here, more burghers and the lesser nobles, so three provinces owned by the burghers that means the burgers are going to be making a lot of money. They have 33.5% of our landed estates. Continue on and continue to improve relations with just about anybody that we can. I was hoping to get a huge influx of cash, but that didn't quite happen, so... Adult, our diplomats have stopped trying to improve with Aragon. Castile is apparently no longer considered a valid rival for me. Okay... We didn't eclipse them. Somehow he must have gotten too strong? What? Some squirrely stuff going on with this guy. We still technically have the Humiliate Rival CB, and now it's gone. I'm kind of tempted to declare another war on him, just that I can take another province and release Leon and get rid of this this disaster. Silver is here. Hmm. Province also has some trauma to it, though. Instead, Castile has rivaled England, which means that Aragon and Castile might end up becoming friends of friends, which is not good for me. Hmm, don't believe that this border is here. I don't think I can fabricate on here. It's a shame. Maybe I should have taken this one as well. Or instead. My, my reasoning for taking these provinces was basically that I just wanted to take stuff that was as close as possible to the capital to try to take advantage of uh, communication time. Try to bring this stuff into the realm at a fairly quick rate. Superb and excellent communication speed. Alright, so we are able to start the process of coring right now. The autonomy is already on its way down slightly, or... Yeah, look at that, we actually have... 70% here. 
It does take quite a while to core. Is my overextension going up or down? Are there people dying right now? Coring cost is modified by 12% due to centralization, rural population, urban population, other population, is territory expansion capacity. So basically just core it. Go. Make it so. Make it mine. And we still have the admin points to take tech. That's spectacular. If it keeps going at 1% per month, and the coring is going to take 67 months, we should be fine on this disaster. So we can just, uh, we can just afford to stabilize for a little, little while. Fully maintained forts. Negative 3.87. Look at that. We have fort... Fort level is reducing unrest. Even though I'm not paying for any forts here. Or is that just in general, like, the... This? Give it a month, I want to see if that, ch that number changes. Fully maintained forts, negative 3.87. No, it went up even more. Negative eight. So if I just pay for my forts, they're like ridiculously much more loyal. That sounds great. Let's do that. I could go for a little bit more maximum manpower, please. We do seem to be fairly stable, so I think I'm going to try this Religious Tolerance. It's going to reduce our missionary strength, but make us more tolerant of the Catholics. We lose piety, which I actually want right now, because that means that we will have some secularism. The current effects of piety now are trade efficiency, advisor cost reduction, tech cost reduction. Uh, dev some blood tax happened to us. Did we not have that before? Oh, we have lost the effects. It actually got stronger. Huh. Okay. I guess, it, okay, it got stronger because we now have more Catholics that are, are participating in it. Makes sense. Probably should have taken the tech after switching to the... Tolerance policy, and is there any- there was one more, or a couple more things that I can actually have direct control over. If I have a... A specific advisor... Philosopher or natural scientist. And we already have negative ten for allying a heathen country, which we've done. We've allied our Aragon. So, a- well, let's see, I've already forgotten. It was a... A philosopher or a natural scientist? Okay, none of those are an available option. Um, this guy, the High Judge, would probably be more valuable than this, this production efficiency and trade income guy. Production income is pretty low. Yeah. Let's go for the National Unrest and Autonomy Decay. The Collector... We still want the level 2 Military Advisor. We're not ahead of time on Military Tech. So, I think we're okay to keep him for now. I'll just hold on to the current guy for the moment. Excellent, cool. Well, I think things are going pretty well. I'll go back up to speed four. Let's go ahead and uh, switch up the diplomats to hopefully start improving relations with somebody that matters. Uh, I don't know. Outraged countries. Go. All right, cool. I'll be back, though, in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.